Hey guys, this video is an update to a previous video that I made about doing screen recording on macOS with free software. Uh, this video is going to use the same software but in a different configuration and be quicker and more to the point. And this hopefully will provide better support for some people that were having problems with the last one. Uh, so to get started, uh, visit a website, rogueamoeba.com. And this is a great little company that has been around for a number of years, and they make uh, pretty awesome uh, audio software for recording and for editing for macOS. Um, they provide a couple of things for free, which is what we need. So from their site, uh, look for the freebie section. Click on that. And then we need two applications from this page. The first is Line In at the top. Go ahead and click on Download Now. And if you scroll down the page a bit, look for Soundflower, uh, learn more, and click on download Soundflower. Now, a little bit about Soundflower. Uh, Soundflower is an open source application that installs virtual audio devices um, onto your Mac that makes uh, so that it makes uh, doing audio recording and, and doing certain applications much easier. Um, uh, it's an open source project. Um, so you can visit the project page on GitHub. Uh, it's github.com slash rogueamoeba slash soundflower. And if you are into open source, you can uh, leave issues here, uh, contribute, stuff like that. Um, so going back to this, uh, this is actually pretty straightforward. So the first thing that we're gonna do is install the applications and then configure them. Uh, so uh, the first step is uh, go ahead and open up line in. You can do this uh, from Chrome, your browser, or from the downloads. Um, and then uh, this will unzip the application. Just drag this line in application to your applications. In my case, I already have it. Uh, the next thing that you're going to want to do is go back to uh, downloads and open up soundflower.zip and then soundflower.dmg. Uh, and once this mounts, uh, go ahead and double click on uh, soundflower.pkg. And then this warning is going to appear um, because this is not an application that you've downloaded from the App Store. So the way to deal with this, click OK. And from Spotlight, and remember Spotlight is either command space on your keyboard or the magnifying glass in the top right of your screen. Uh, type in security, and then that'll autocomplete security and privacy. Hit enter on that. And then this window will open. Now, if you look here on the bottom, you'll see soundflower.pkg was blocked from opening because it was not from an identified developer. Um, in this case, we know who the developer is. It's Rogue Amoeba. It's an open source pro uh, application. Um, so we're going to go ahead and click open anyway. Now, you should, only, as a word of warning, only do this with software that you know where it's coming from. Um, if it's not coming from the App Store, it hasn't been signed, and um, it's generally safe, but just make sure you know where you're getting your, your software from. Um, we get a second warning here about a certificate. Go ahead and click Continue. And at this point, just continue through. And I agree to that. And this is where I'm going to stop. You should click Install. Uh, I already have this installed. Um, once this is done installing Soundflower, uh, then it's going to need to restart your computer. So be prepared for that. So once you have Soundflower installed, uh, we need to configure this. So um, from Spotlight, um, type in line in, and then the line in application will open. So what we need to do from here is the input from um, this should be the microphone that you're using. Um, your external microphone will work fine if that's what you have. Um, or in my case, I have a Blue Yeti, uh, so I'm going to choose that one, the Blue USB Audio 2.0. And then I want to output this to Soundflower 2 channel. This is one of the two virtual sound devices that Soundflower installs for us. Uh, and then the third, uh, the third step is just click playthrough. And now you can start seeing the waveforms from my voice coming through. And we're done with line in. So the next step is to set up what is called the audio MIDI setup. So again, from Spotlight, type in uh, MIDI or audio MIDI and open that. Uh, now, uh, the first thing that we want to do is in the bottom left here, click on this plus and choose create multi-output device. 
if you select this and either double click it or uh, hit enter, you can rename it. I recommend renaming it something like QT output. It's very helpful if you have multiple, like I have Elgato output, which is what my external uh, screen capture device is, is working from. So under the QT output, um, what we're you want to check off built-in output and you want to check Soundflower 2 channel. On the right, under Drift Correction, make sure that you check off the boxes for both built-in output and Soundflower 2 channel. Um, the last thing to look on, for on this device is uh, at the top, your master device will probably say built-in output. If, if it's selected to Soundflower 2 channel, make sure you set it to built-in output. And take note of the sample rate. Um, in my case, I'm using 44.1. There are multiple options if you have slightly different needs, um, but make note of what the sample rate is. So the next thing that we need to do is click on built-in output and make sure that the format is set to the same as the uh, QT output. And again, in my case, 44.1. And then on your uh, USB device, or sorry, your microphone, uh, make sure that you set that to 44.1 also. Um, which you can do right here. I'm not gonna change mine because I'm not recording uh, through QuickTime with this. I'm using a different device. But you would wanna make sure that your device is set to 44.1. Uh, then the last thing is on Soundflower 2, make sure that it is also set to 44.1 or whatever format you're using. Um, then the last two steps are that you want to um, right click on the Bluetooth, uh, sorry, right click on your microphone, say this, and you would want to choose use this device for sound input. And then the last thing would be on QT output right click on that and choose use this device for sound output. Again, I'm not going to do it because I'm not recording from that. Um, now with those settings configured, the last thing you need to do is to go to QuickTime. So if we go to QuickTime, escape from that and then choose file, new, screen recording. And from here, what you'll want to do is click on Soundflower 2 channel, and then you can start recording. And then this will start recording the screen. Um, and that's it, that's all you need to do. Um, I'm going to include a short video at the end of this where I'll walk through the same settings doing the screen recording from QuickTime um, so that you can see the, uh, uh, the actual settings in action. Um, but that's it for the video. I hope this really helps. Uh, if you like the video, give it a like. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe and feel free to leave comments. Um, and if you have any problems, let me know. Um, thanks a lot. Bye. As this is the uh, tail end video. I'm recording this with QuickTime. Um, if you take a look at our audio device settings real quick, you can see that uh, QT output is now set as my uh, default sound output. And if you look at the microphone, I've changed the format to 441 to match all the other settings. Um, if we switch over here to uh, YouTube, I can play a few seconds of music. And you can also hear that I'm, I'm talking to open music at the same time, so both sounds can be merged together in the recording. And if we stop this, um, that's all there is to it. Um, I hope this helps a lot. Thanks for listening.